Big surprise, the Flight 10 booster test just experienced an unexpected abort, raising some concern. But there's no need to worry, another testing opportunity is on the horizon. So what exactly happened? Adding to the buzz in the space industry, Elon Musk recently announced that SpaceX plans to phase out the Dragon spacecraft. Why was this decision made? Meanwhile, efforts are also underway to preserve NASA's SLS, Orion, and Lunar Gateway programs. Are these moves truly justified? Let's dive into all of this on today's episode of Great SpaceX. It's clear that SpaceX is ramping up Starship operations as it pushes forward to meet ambitious new goals. Following Musk's estimate of a three to four week turnaround, the pace has noticeably picked up. At the center of the attention during this phase is B-16, the first stage booster for the upcoming Flight 10. After being transported to the launch pad on the morning of the 4th of June, B-16 was quickly moved to the orbital launch mount, where SpaceX immediately began preparing it for testing. According to the announced schedule, the static fire test for B-16 was expected to occur during a 12-hour window from 7 in the morning to 7 in the evening on the 5th and the 6th, set as a backup date. However, things didn't go as planned. On the 5th, pad clearing operations took place in the morning as expected. Later in the afternoon, the usual pre burn sequence began, including strong venting and engine chill-down. Fuel loading commenced shortly after, and based on the visible frost patterns, it appeared that the booster was filled with a full load of liquid oxygen, and about a third capacity of liquid methane, consistent with standard pre-test procedures. Everything seemed ready for engine ignition, but instead of a fiery roar, viewers witnessed the depress venting process, a signal that the test had been aborted. This was followed by detanking, as evidenced by the frost lines receding on the booster's tank, showing that propellant was being removed. So, what went wrong? Several theories are being discussed. One possibility is an issue with the fuel tank system. This component is notoriously sensitive, and problems can arise at any time. For instance, during Flight 9, a leak in the fuel tank caused a drop in pressure, which in turn led to a loss of control due to insufficient fuel flow to the engines. A similar issue could have occurred with B-16, forcing a last-minute abort. Another likely culprit is the engine ignition system. Historically, this system has proven problematic. Both Flight 7 and 8 suffered ignition failures during the boost back burn phase, and it's believed that a similar issue contributed to the engine failure during Flight 9's landing burn. Given that most pre-ignition steps were completed successfully before the abort, the engines, specifically the igniters, are a strong candidate for the source of the issue. There's also a chance that the problem stemmed from a support system, such as the water deluge. Observers noted that the system did not activate during the abort attempt, which could have automatically halted the engine firing sequence due to safety protocols. While the exact cause remains unconfirmed, SpaceX is known for rapidly troubleshooting and adapting. A second attempt is expected as early as the 6th of June, and assuming the issue is resolved, B-16 will still return to the production site as scheduled for inspection and installation. Meanwhile, S-36, the ship that will accompany B-16 on Flight 10, is also preparing for its own round of testing. It is expected to be transported to Massey for static fire testing. Like the booster, S-36 will undergo post-test inspection and installation before being mated for launch. If things progress smoothly, Musk's timeline remains feasible. Personally, while I believe a late June window is possible, I think early July, perhaps around the 3rd, will be a more reasonable and strategic target. What do you think? Share your predictions for Flight 10's launch date in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on SpaceX's incredible journey. Now that we've wrapped up the latest Starship developments, let's turn our attention to a surprising and dramatic update involving Musk's Dragon spacecraft. In a move that caught many off guard, Musk recently announced that SpaceX would begin decommissioning its Dragon program, an announcement that has sent shockwaves through the aerospace community. The decision came in response to political tensions between Musk and U.S. President Donald Trump. Historically, Musk and Trump maintained a cooperative relationship, particularly during the presidential campaign and the early months of the new administration. However, that alliance now appears to be unraveling due to recent financial and policy decisions by the White House that have negatively impacted Musk's companies. On the social platform Truth Social, Trump publicly stated, the easiest way to save money in our budget, billions and billions of dollars, is to terminate Elon's governmental subsidies and contracts. I was always surprised that Biden didn't do it. In a swift and bold reply, Musk posted on X, in light of the president's statement about cancellation of my government contracts, SpaceX will begin decommissioning its Dragon spacecraft immediately. 
The potential consequences of such a move are enormous. Dragon has played a vital role in supporting both NASA and the broader U.S. space program. Without it, America would lose its only operational spacecraft capable of carrying astronauts to the International Space Station. At this time, no other American spacecraft is fully certified or available to assume that role. Additionally, Dragon is responsible for a majority of cargo resupply missions to the ISS, a critical task as other vehicles have faced delays or technical issues. Since its inception, Dragon has flown 51 missions, 46 of which have been to the ISS. Its track record speaks volumes. Not only has it provided dependable logistics support, but it has also come to NASA's aid during emergencies. One standout example occurred when Dragon was used to help rescue two astronauts stranded on the ISS due to the persistent issues with Boeing's Starliner. In many ways, Dragon has become NASA's most reliable workhorse for low Earth orbit operations. If Dragon were truly to be decommissioned, the U.S. space program would be forced to revisit a scenario reminiscent of the post-space shuttle era, a period during which America relied on Russian Soyuz spacecraft to send astronauts to the ISS. For a nation that prides itself on technological leadership and independence in space, that would represent a significant and symbolic setback. The rift between Musk and Trump doesn't appear to stem solely from budget issues. Tensions have also been inflamed by the recent withdrawal of Jared Isaacman from his nomination for NASA Administrator, a move believed to have political undertones. Additionally, Trump's stance on electric vehicles and the controversial Big Beautiful Bill policy have added more friction to their once cordial relationship. It's a sobering reminder that political shifts and policy decisions can deeply affect the trajectory of the aerospace sector, whether we like it or not. However, just as tensions seem to be escalating beyond repair, Musk appeared to walk back his announcement. In response to a message on X encouraging him to reconsider, Musk replied simply, Good advice, okay, we won't decommission Dragon. This change in tone, while subtle, was a huge relief to those watching the situation unfold. It suggests that despite the political friction, cooler heads may yet prevail for the sake of national interests and scientific progress. Meanwhile, preparations for Dragon's next mission are moving ahead. The spacecraft assigned to Axiom-4, the next private astronaut mission, has already been moved to the hangar at Kennedy Space Center. The mission is currently scheduled for launch on June 10th. For now, cooperation between SpaceX and NASA remains intact, and Dragon continues to serve as the backbone of U.S. access to space. In truth, the future of political relationships, especially at this level, is impossible to predict. But we can all hope that, regardless of political divides, the importance of maintaining America's leadership in space will prevail. If you agree and support America's space leadership, throw down the American flag in the comment section down below. Now, let's turn our attention to the latest developments in the effort to preserve NASA's major lunar exploration programs, the Space Launch System, the Orion spacecraft, and the Lunar Gateway. As previously discussed, the proposed budget cuts from the White House have sparked widespread controversy and concern, especially regarding NASA's future plans. Among the many programs on the chopping block, the elimination of NASA's deep space systems like SLS, Orion, and the Lunar Gateway appeared to have garnered the most support from those backing the cuts. Other projects, such as space telescopes and the International Space Station operations, stirred more public and congressional resistance. However, in a surprising turn of events, a notable figure has stepped forward in defense of these programs. On June 5th, Senator Ted Cruz, chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee, announced a new legislative package aimed at counteracting the proposed cuts. The initiative includes a proposed $10 billion budget reconciliation bill intended to offset reductions outlined in the White House's plan. This package blends new spending, adjustments to existing budgets, and tax cuts to make room for critical investments. Of that $10 billion total, nearly half at $4.1 billion is proposed to go directly toward continuing SLS production, specifically to support Artemis 4 and 5. Though the Orion spacecraft receives a relatively small allocation of $20 million, this funding signals an intention to maintain development for the Artemis IV mission, thereby confirming a degree of program continuity. This plan directly contradicts the White House's previous proposal, which suggested retiring both SLS and Orion following Artemis III. 
Additionally, the package proposes $2.6 billion to complete development of the Lunar Gateway, a project that was slated for immediate cancellation under the earlier budget plan. Overall, this legislative package demonstrates a clear effort to keep NASA's flagship lunar infrastructure programs alive despite their long timelines, high costs, and questionable efficiency. The remaining funds from the $10 billion plan are earmarked for other essential programs. These include $700 million for the Mars Telecommunications Orbiter, $1 billion for NASA facility improvements, $1.25 billion spread over five years to support ISS operations, and $325 million to continue work on the USD orbit vehicle. From a practical standpoint, support for the ISS and related orbital operations seems reasonable given the station's ongoing scientific value and international cooperation. However, the decision to continue investing in NASA's lunar architecture remains controversial. While Senator Cruz emphasized that the package focuses only on the manned spaceflight centers and the infrastructure needed to beat China to Mars and the Moon, the underlying challenges remain. SLS has been under development for more than a decade and has only flown once during Artemis 1. Despite its limited flight history, the program has cost NASA over $10 billion, not including the expenses tied to Orion and the Lunar Gateway. Concerns also remain over the future quality and performance of Boeing-manufactured SLS rockets. Orion, meanwhile, faced several technical issues during its Artemis 1 return, particularly regarding the reliability of its heat shield. As for the Lunar Gateway, critics argue it is overly complex, expensive to maintain, and poorly suited for integration with SpaceX's Starship human landing system. Given these factors, it's worth asking, is it the right decision to continue investing in these legacy systems, or should NASA shift its focus toward more agile and cost-effective alternatives? What do you think? Join the discussion in the comments section and share your views on the future of NASA's lunar programs. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly on the latest milestones in SpaceX's journey. Thank you so much for watching and always remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will follow you so long as you keep looking up.